So I really thought I had my girls timed out and it looked like last night when I closed up the barn that we had um, Mossy, Sky, and Sunny that were all kind of vying to see who was gonna go first because uh, Sky and Sunny are just a couple days past due date. Mossy is right after her due date. <laughs> like today is the day after. So Mark and I and Joe all took bets. Joe decided that Mossy was gonna go first. I said that Sunny was gonna go first. And Mark said, well, I guess that leaves me with Sky." I'm happy to say I won that bet. Sunny, you did such a good job. You did such a good job with these three. They're so colorful. You did so good. You did so good. I'm so proud of you. I probably missed Sunny's birth by about an hour, but I'm in here now because Mossy is in active labor and she's pushing. Are we pushing, Mama? We got the kickstand. She's got the goo. She got all the telltale signs that we are getting ready to have some babies. We're gonna have babies, Mossy. She didn't seem to really want me in there, so that's why I'm over here messing with Sunny. But it looks like that uh, it's Mossy's laying down again, so I'm gonna kind of wait until she looks like she's in the absolute throes before I go to her because every time I get close, she's getting up, which isn't uncommon. Mossy's a pretty friendly goat. It's just when she gets ready for birth, she's one that doesn't really want me around. So I kind of just chill out nearby and uh, watch. And then when she's really in the throes of pushing, that's when I'll, I'll come into her. What's your teeth placement, lady? Good for babies, not for milking. What a happy little family. I'm always amazed at how much bigger Bucklings are at birth. Like how big he is compared to his sister. This little girl is the second biggest. That's the tiniest. He's got blue eyes. He's got blue eyes because he's beautiful. And you are just so sweet and feisty. I like the feisty ones. I like the feisty ones. What do you think? You gonna share a birthday with Mossy's babies? Think you guys the bestest of friends? Had all those terrible storms go through down south, lots of tornadoes, and the wind here has been just a little scary. Like it just feels like it's shaking everything. So. It's a little unnerving. You guys can talk and get the blue gloves on, and I think Mossy is just going to progress if I'm just not in that general vicinity. If she gets down and she pushes, and she looks like she's getting ready to go, and I'll come over and she'll stand up. So I'm just, I'm sometimes with does, even does that you've kitted out like a lot that are normally friendly, like you got to read the room. Sometimes they just don't want you around. And uh, I've actually had quite a few uh, people this, this year that say, it's just like they wait for me to leave the barn. I'm like, they absolutely wait for you to leave the barn. It's not because they don't like, especially your friendly goats that are bonded to you. It's not because like, they don't love you or anything. It's just, they need, like, they're like us. They want our, their privacy when something like that is happening. Now I know when she's really pushing, pushing, she won't care if I'm there or not. I'm just waiting until she gets to that point. But, uh... She started to have some stronger contractions. She's just standing up. So I'm afraid she's gonna airdrop them, which really isn't a big deal. And the weather's not terrible, but it's, I just wanted to step away and give a note to anybody that's going through kidding season. And you've got a doe that just seems like she's not gonna go. She's super friendly and you're just like, why isn't she progressing? Sometimes we need to step out. So I'm over here in the other barn, out of mind, out of sight. She can probably still hear me, but I'm not presently there, so. Um, hopefully that's going to help her, but just a little note, read your room, your goats sometimes just don't want you there with them. It's okay to be nearby, but maybe just go where you can listen for when they get to those, uh, those screaming parts, because that's pretty much when I know, okay, it's stuff is happening, and she may need assistance at this point. Oh, no. 
know if the puppy pads are great because they're not really used to these. This is the second dose that's kind of freaked out when I put puppy pads on again. There's nothing. There's nothing yet. There's nothing yet. I stalled her a little bit. But I just just text Mark a timestamp so that she's I mean she's pushing. She's having active contractions. So I sent a text to Mark as a timestamp so that I know in 30 minutes if she hasn't progressed, I'm going to help her. Um sometimes that's helpful if you're you're out when you've got a phone, if you've got a friend, just shoot them a text when they start actively pushing and just say timestamp. That way you know when they started pushing. Oh, she's going. Okay, just hear me out. I know this looks really weird if you're not familiar with this practice, but I promise I am not harming this newly born baby goat. Why I'm doing this is that it sounds like this guy is actually choking on some of the birthing fluids. Even though I often try to make sure that I clear away the birthing sac, sometimes these little guys and gals just inhale the mucus and it can actually choke them. So whenever my vet has been over and he's pulled and we've experienced this together, he's directed me that it is okay to grab them by their back legs securely and to swing them back and forth. What this does is it actually moves that mucus away from their air pipe so that they can breathe. That and sometimes the shock gets them to exclaim a little bit. And usually when you scream or you exclaim, that's air pushing out of your lungs, out of your windpipe and out your mouth, which is also going to help to move that mucus away from the air pipe as well. Because the normal thing for kids to do once they're born is to shake their head back and forth. And what they're doing when they shake their head back and forth is they're removing that mucus and the birthing fluids from their airways naturally. He did do that, but it looks like he did inhale a little bit. So I promise I am not hurting this little baby goat. This does not cause him any pain. It might give him a little bit of a surprise, but it really is in his best interest. So this is where it gets a little dicey during Mossy's birth. Mossy is a veteran at kidding and she's had almost all of her babies unassisted. So when she did give me two really strong contractions and nothing was happening and I noticed that there was a lot of pressure in the rear end that the skin was kind of flexing but nothing was happening, no bubble or anything. The signs kind of all lined up that we might have a malpositioned kid, which is called dystocia, when a kid is not positioned correctly to come out in the normal diving position. So luckily I already have my hands gloved up. I've already washed up in preparation for this birth. So I've lubed and I'm going in to see how this kid is positioned. It's important to go in very gently and to be prepared to have a little bit of force put against you these goats are in labor and contractions are strong pushes to push things out of the birth canal. 
So the fact that you might be going into the birth canal to assist a kid, there's going to be a lot of pressure pushing against you and she's not going to like this. So when I reached in and I felt this kid, at first I felt, thought it was his bony little butt. But as I started to move my hands around, I noticed that they were shoulder blades and I could feel the ear and the eye socket and it quickly came to me that this kid was presenting with his head down tucked between his legs. So I had to gently push my hand around and to hook a finger underneath of his chin. Once I got his head up, I took another finger and hooked a leg to pull it up close to the chin so that during her next contraction, I could help her by pulling the kid through the birth canal. It's really important that you do not pull unless there is a contraction because there's a lot going on in the uterus. It's really easy to cause abrasions and tears during assisting a kid that's been malpositioned in, in the throes of birth. If you can't tell what you're feeling, my common practice is to just close my eyes and try to visualize what I'm feeling. Try to stay calm because this can be a really high stress situation. And what I will say is to make sure that you know your own personal boundaries and parameters where you're comfortable. I usually give myself 15 to 20 minutes to help reposition a kid. And if I can't, I'm calling my vet. Finally, this kid is in the right position and Mossy was able to pass with a little bit of help from me. Um, because I had to go in manually, even though I my hands have been washed and everything, um, I probably will give her five days of penicillin just in case I've introduced anything. Because by going into a dough, even with gloves, lube, and washed up, there's still the chance that you can present foreign bacteria into her uterus, which might have slight tears or um, hopefully no tears, but it could have suffered some abrasions from being repositioned. It's important to give them um, a broad spectrum antibiotic like penicillin to help to prevent infection. <laughs> a lot of adrenaline going right now. I just, you get an adrenaline burst every time you pull a kid because you never know how it's gonna turn out and uh, it can get really stressful. The best thing is to just close your eyes and try to feel what you're feeling and try to see in your head what you're feeling because at first I felt, I thought that was this little bony butt that was presented and then went around and like there's an ear and there's an eye socket and uh, just went through and just gently rolled his chin up. It might not seem gently from like the video, but you're going in as easily as you can and pushing the head back in against contractions, which is why mommy, it doesn't feel good to have to assist for her or for me, for anybody, but just gently pushed him back in, rolled a finger around to hook a hoof and pull one hoof up with the chin and just pulled out, so. So right now I have two healthy bucks. It's, but I've got a lot of adrenaline going, so. Uh, that makes me so happy to see two on the ground like that. Jell is pinky. Want her babies now. Are you getting any ideas, Sky? Are you getting any ideas? Huh? You're next. You're next. <laughs> like after seeing that, I don't want to. Before I leave her to it, I'm going to bump her to see if she's got any more in there. 
she's not acting like she's got another one in there, but the best way to bump is just to stand behind her. I'm just gonna ease. I'm gonna put my hands in front of her udder, and I'm gonna just gently lift. She feels jelly, so I'm guessing she's only had, having the two. I feel like jelly. Good job, Mama. Good job, Mama. And remove this so she doesn't turn her toe. I'm going to pick him up with.